Swimming Pool Steve here with another uh, swimming pool equipment installation review. This one's got a couple of things going on here, so let's take a look. Okay, so we've got the original poly lines in the ground that have been converted over to SpaFlex, which is pretty normal. Uh, single union ball valve. Now this I do not like to see. This is a street elbow um, directly into the suction side port of this pump. That's a really bad idea. I mean, in, in, in almost all cases, you're going to be overworking the pump just because of that there. The, the, you should have at least 10 times the pipe diameter in a straight run directly into the pump, unobstructed with even unions or valves, um, uh, elbows, anything like that, but especially a street elbow directly into the, the front side of that pump. You're just, you're asking for troubles with that. Now, this is an easy flow. Okay, so it's not a super pump uh, too not a super pump 2. Uh, being that super pump 2 is a high head application pump, uh, you would definitely be overworking that, but this easy float is okay. As you can see, the, it's running uh, well with no water or no air in the system, uh, but long term, that pump is going to be working harder than it needs to be. Uh, matched with about a 24 inch sand filter here. Okay, so out of the pump, all the way around. This is some pretty old SpaFlex here. You can see it's like distended and you, and you can see the striations in it. And again, we've got another really old, like I don't, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but those fittings are yellow as opposed to white like the PVC should be. I think it's just really old PVC. Um, like nobody uses threaded um, uh, 90s. This, this should be a male adapter into a sweep, sweep elbow. And I just felt a leak under there as I was reaching underneath. Let's see if we can see anything. Uh, you can see the the dampness running down and some staining from that. So that's from that right there. What you should have here is an inch and a half threaded male adapter that goes in, then a union fitting, then an elbow, a sweep elbow. And that would allow you, uh, the union fitting would allow you to adjust the threads if you needed to crank it up uh, because of a leak developing. And that's what's happened here, but there's no way to, to tighten this. If I tighten this more, it's just gonna put extra strain on that, that pipe. Actually, the pipe itself hanging free air as you can see, is likely the reason that this has tight, been tightened this way, but then slowly backed off due to the weight of this. Like with this pipe full of water, it's actually pretty heavy. This should be definitely attached to the wall, or better yet, uh, rigid piping out to the wall and attached to the wall and then down to the pump. Everything nice, secure, firm. I don't like free air pipes, and I certainly don't like free air spa flex pipe. So there we go. Uh, out of the, oh, actually look at that, that filter's up by me 26 psi too high uh, 30 is kind of your maximum uh, safe operational uh, 50 is your hard maximum for the safety of the equipment but you really don't expect to see this is a big pool but that's pretty high uh, this filter probably is in uh, pretty good need of a backwash okay getting back to the system here coming out of the filter head and we have <gasps> what is that a sacrificial anode say it ain't so somebody cares about this pool all right let's We'll touch on that in a sec. Let's just keep rolling through here. So we come out of that filter. We're going into the uh, heater, back out of the heater, into a check valve, and then down into a salt water chlorinator. Okay, so let's just go through these one by one. Sacrificial anode, which is grounded, which prevents, helps to prevent, mitigate the damage of galvanic corrosion by giving the system a weaker metal to corrode, which is the zinc that's in here in about every two years or so. Actually, you can see it here replaced by 2018, so that means that was probably installed this year. So every two to three years, you have to replace that. So that's great. I love seeing that. Uh, every pool should have that. If you have a saltwater pool and you don't have that, you're just asking for problems. Um, okay, so then into the heater, out of the heater. Uh, again, we got some street elbows, which I don't like to see at all, but we do have a check valve, which I love to see. Um, so that check valve was installed because this saltwater chlorinator will track water, uh, chlorinated water, backwards through the system into this, uh, into this heater, and this heater would fail. Actually, this heater has failed and will be being replaced, but that's the process here. So we come through the saltwater cell. This piece here with the wire on it, this is actually your flow valve, your flow switch. A lot of people don't know how to properly install one of these. In order to meet Hayward's recommendation, which is what this turbo cell is right here, you need 10 times the pipe diameter in front of the flow switch and four times the pipe diameter 
after the flow switch. So let's say we had two inch pipe. So 10 times the, the, the diameter of the pipe in front of the flow switch would be 20 inches in front of the, 20 inches in front of the flow switch. We've got a spider crawling over the lens. Okay, so 20 inches in front of the flow switch and then four times two would be eight inches following it. So you would need a 28 inch clear run. Now, I do believe that Hayward now considers the, the cell itself to be part of the clear run. Uh, however, this street elbow directly following it um, does not meet the requirements. Is it gu guaranteed, to be a, guaranteed to be a problem? No, not at all. Um, obviously, the system's running and the salt is working. The pool's nice and clear. Chlorine's being made. But you can run into problems, intermittent problems or, or long-term problems uh, where the flow switch won't be able to close. It's just a little piece of metal in there. Uh, so again, to, to meet the installing, uh, installer's recommendations for the flow switch, 10 times the pipe diameter in front of it and 4 times the pipe diameter following it. So all in all, this is... Uh, oh, and one more thing here. Look at this. This bonding wire got attached to the heater there. That was definitely done after the fact and definitely something that uh, all, all heaters should have. If you have a bonding lug anywhere in your heater, no copper wire attached to it, that's no good. You have to get that looked at. So yeah, this is a kind of a combination of some, uh, some bad stuff there with the street elbows, the high pressure of the system, the free air spa flex, uh, more street elbows down here, but also combined with some really good stuff like a brand new sacrificial anode, a check valve to prevent that chlorinator from backtracking through the system. So a little bit of both worlds here on this one.